You can track your tasks, so you can track your notes. They have a database of data that you need to track, and Notion is just a really good tool for that. Hey there, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Now, my goal set at this video is to walk you through one of the top tools that every virtual assistant should at least know or have on their tool belt. Now, if this is your first time on my channel, my name is Lainley Lakaba. I've been working from home since I was 15 years old and now run my own outsourcing company here in the Philippines. And I post videos every Sunday and Thursday on how to work from home and how to have a business from home. So make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so you don't miss any of my videos. Now, in previous videos that I've done, on tools I've always said the tools are a multiplier they are basically something that will magnify what you already have and that you should learn them and use them wisely now the tools that I'm going to be talking about here are top tools that most employers will expect you to know or learn about if you're going to become a virtual assistant and I'm gonna walk you guys through different ways that you can use this or your employers might ask you to use them and also how you can utilize them as a virtual assistant. Now, the first tool is Google Calendar. It is basically one of the most basic, honestly, of tools that you can start learning as you start working with someone else. Now, when it comes to being a virtual assistant, one of the tasks that you're probably going to be doing is just calendar management. So calendar management is you making sure that your client doesn't get overbooked, that your client is able to you know, take off when they need to take off, or it could be re arranging meetings or rescheduling things or making sure that they make sense. That's how you can use it for your employer. You use it for sending out invites for meetings or accepting meetings if your client wants to have that meeting. So it's an easy way for you to be able to manage their time. And on the flip side, as a virtual assistant, you can use it to manage your own time. So for example, in other videos that I've done on productivity secrets, I've talked about time blocking where you can actually put on your calendar certain times of the day of the week that you want to work on a specific project or a specific theme. So for example, for me, every morning at eight o'clock to nine o'clock, I do my admin work, you know, doing going through emails, going through, you know, bank statements, for example, or clearing things out. That is my time for that. And then onwards, it could be meetings. And then later again, at seven o'clock to eight o'clock, I'm doing more just close out admin work and preparing myself for the next day. All of that is scheduled on my Google Calendar to kind of really remind me of this is the thing that I'm going to do. For example, for me, filming this video, I usually have it every Tuesday and Wednesday, at nine o'clock to 10 o'clock. That's my schedule for when I want to do them. And of course, at times when I might have a meeting or I can't do them, I'm able to easily reschedule on my Google Calendar when I can work on them. It's also a way for you to coordinate calendars if you're managing your client's teams, for example, to see if there's any meetings that can be done and when they can can be arranged. And just as a bonus tip, on Google Calendar, there's something called Google Tasks, where you can actually schedule and track your tasks on a certain day that you can just use again for your own productivity. Another tool that you should know about is Calendly. Now, Calendly is a online scheduling tool. So it coordinates also with Google Calendar. It coordinates with other types of calendars as well. But mainly the purpose of it is if someone wanted to book a meeting with you, they will use Calendly to be able to cross check if they're available and when you are available. There's no more of that back and forth, basically of making sure that, hey, are you free Wednesday at 9 o'clock? No, maybe can we try 10? Like, oh no, I'm busy. It cuts all of that and just gives someone a really quick way to schedule a meeting with you. And of course, for your client, it makes it easier for other people to schedule meetings with them and for you to confirm with your client that, hey, is this okay? You know, this person booked, sh should I research on them? Should I find out more about them before your meeting? So it gives you a little bit more information you're about to meet and also be able to be briefed before that meeting happens. Next is a tool that I've talked a lot about is a tool called Notion. I've done a whole video of different ways that you can use Notion as a virtual assistant, but basically it is a database, a note-taking tool, a whole like file system. Notion really is very flexible, so it can be very overwhelming for people who've never used it before. But for me, I personally use it as a task tracker. I use it as a project tracker. I use it as a notes tracker. I use it as a database for all of my work. And I basically kind of, my whole company to exude just lives on Notion. So as a virtual assistant, it would be good for you to have some way that you can track your tasks, that you can track your notes. They have a database of data that you need to track and Notion is just a really good tool for that. And for your client, they'll probably use it the same way that I'm using it, where we're using it to track our clients, you know, any, I guess, still like tasks done, we use it to track the training that we give our assistants. So we're able to just have it inside of Notion. We don't have to keep flipping through different tools. So there's a lot of different tutorials out there on Notion. Again, I have a full video on it myself. Basically, 
basically just a quick way for you to just have a place to store data. Next is a tool called Grammarly. When you're a virtual assistant, you need to be someone who knows how to double and triple check things before sending things out. And Grammarly helps you clean out any grammatical errors, any spelling errors that you might have before you send it out. So use tools, utilize tools like Grammarly. There's another one called Hemingway where you can double check things before you send them out. Next tool that you should know about is a tool called Hubstaff or basically just a time tracker. Hubstaff makes it possible for you to track and look at the things that you're doing every day and take screenshots every 10 minutes. So as an employer for me, for example, in 2 xu we use this as a tool to track our assistant's time and to see what they're working on at different times, depending on the screenshots taken. So for you as a virtual assistant, you can utilize this tool to be able to check your productivity, to see what are the things that you're working on, what are the things you're spending your time on, so you're more aware and you're able to direct yourself to be more productive as needed. Next is a tool called Zoom. Now, if you're not on Zoom, if you have no idea what Zoom is, you better get on it because it's one of the ways that your client is going to be able to do video calls with you or voice calls, depending on what it is that you guys need. It is a tool where you can share your screen if there's a problem or a presentation that you're doing. You can record meetings and be able to go back to it later on. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use Zoom and you really need to be familiar with it because again, it is one of the basic tools that a lot of employers already use that you should probably already know about. Speaking of communication tools, another one that you should definitely know about is Slack. So Slack is a communication chat tool that you can have different threads, different chats with different people. You could create different group chats. And for a lot of employers, again, it's another basic tool for them to use when it comes to communicating with other people. So learning just how Slack can be used, the different shortcuts that you can use, the different apps that you can connect to it, is going to be a great way for you to put yourself up on a higher tier because you know this particular tool that a client might need. Next really useful tool, especially as a virtual assistant, is otter.ai. Now, otter.ai transcribes an audio into text. So for example, let's say that your employer is more of a talker, then they can give you tasks this way of like speaking into Otter like, hey, can you make sure that we do this? And then you are able to get the description of it already. Or if they are doing a speech or they're asking you to transcribe something, it's going to be one of the fastest ways that you can do it because it auto transcribes already. It's not perfect. So you still have to double check and use Grammarly to double check the grammar and the spelling again. But it is a way for you to get a transcription very easily from your employer. Next is basically the whole, what we call Google Suite or G Suite. So the whole Google Suite is everything from Google Drive, Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, Google Forms, Google Drawing. Knowing about the whole Google Suite is going to give you an advantage when you start working with different clients. Now you can use this yourself, like you can use you know, Google Drive to manage your files, you can use Google Docs to create notes, you can use Google Sheets to track different things, to make formulas, you can use slides to do presentations. As you start practicing more and more all of these different tools, again, they'll give you the edge that a lot of people don't even think of like, hey, you know, what used to be the basic skill that people expected was Microsoft Word, Microsoft Sheet. It's now Google Docs and Google Sheets that you need to really learn a lot about, especially since a lot of employers are automatically using this because other people are using it as well. Next is a tool called LastPass. So LastPass saves passwords so you don't have to remember any of them again or just save them on your browser where it can easily be hacked or it can easily be found out by other people. The thing about LastPass is you can also share passwords with different people so when you're familiar with this already and you suggest this to your employer that's an easy way for them to be able to share passwords with you without feeling that they're going to be compromised later on. The thing about LastPass is it's a Google extension it's an app on your phone so you can use it crosswise and you can easily log out so if you're not using your computer and you're maybe suspicious that someone else might be getting your passwords, you can easily log off and log in later on as well. Now, another amazing tool that you should definitely know as a virtual assistant is just Canva. Now, Canva is a tool that I love to use for everything in my business, whether it is for presentations, whether it's for the thumbnails that you guys see, the graphics on my Instagram. By the way, if you're not following me on Instagram, why aren't you yet? Canva is just one of the ways that you can create graphic posts really easily. Being able to create videos on it, being able to create you know postcards or stickers or anything, they have so many different versatile ways that you can create just art graphics again video for your client and for yourself and the cool thing also with canva is if you're going to be a social media virtual assistant you can use it even to schedule posts 
right on Canva itself. Now, if you guys want to support the channel, you guys can sign up for Canva using leeandlay.com slash Canva, and that will help the channel a lot. Now, a few bonus tools that you should probably know as a virtual assistant. One is Asana or Trello. They're kind of function kind of almost the same way. So just a few differentiations, but they're a really good project and task manager. Another tool that you should probably know about is Vidyard or Loom, where you can record yourself, you know, explaining different things to your employer. It's just a screen recorder where you can even activate having your face on it. So it's just a cool tool for you to communicate better with your employer. And of course, honestly, and nothing really beats it, is just having a pen and paper beside you. There's going to be times where it's going to be harder for you to just put things into your notes file, where having just a pen and paper, just even a post-it and pencil, is going to be life-saving and life-changing for you because you have always a backup way to save things from you because your brain is meant for creating, not storing. So having just a pen and paper on hand is going to help you a lot as a virtual assistant. Now, if you guys like this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button right there and comment below what other tools do you use as a virtual assistant that other people should definitely know about. And if you still have it, make sure to hit the subscribe button right there so you don't miss any new videos every Sunday and Thursday on how to work from home and how to have a business from home, which you guys can check out right here and the latest video right here. I hope you guys have an awesome day and remember that small steps matters and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!